Yo, what's up, people? To, welcome to the Ant Man channel. It is uh, Friday, the 14th of March, 2014, and I'm usually your host. Um, I got an article here in front of me from the Times of Israel, who I thought was a pretty cool uh, article uh, by David Shama, where Moses meets Wall Street. Traditional Judaism has a lot to say about modern economies, and the Keter Institute's goal is to implement that message. Check out this. This is a silver shekel, by the way, if you guys have never seen this before. I have never seen this before. That's pretty cool. Silver shekels are spoken about in many, many different places in the Bible. A silver shekel from the first century of the Jewish revolt against Rome sold at auction for over a million dollars. So that's photo credited by CC, uh, ancient art flicker. So, okay, we get into this article. Many Jews, even some in the Orthodox community, aren't aware that Jewish law has a great deal to say about money. Yet, large sen uh, segments of the Torah, the five books of Moses, as well as the Talmud, and the subsequent writings of the sages throughout the generations, are dedicated to discussing the minute, or minute, minute I don't know what that means, of laws relating to business, money, loan taking, and making, banking, and other economy oriented topics. So, Orthodox Jews who have a business dispute will often seek the services of a Jewish court of law, a Beit Din, to educate their disputes. In the U.S. and elsewhere in the dis diaspora, as well as in Israel, these courts are considered legal arbit arbitrators. If the parties agree in advance to accept the Jewish court's decisions, they will be enforced by state-sponsored courts. But the Keter Institute for Torah Economics has... As its goal, according to one of the organization's heads, Rabbi Shlomo Ishan, the integration of the Jewish approach to money and business in modern Israel to, to um, as great an extent as possible. Uh, the Institute publishes lists of companies and investment funds that do and do not abide by basic laws against taking or paying interest. A biblical no-no for Jews doing business with other Jews. Those wishing to abide by the laws forbidding receiving interest, for example, are advised not to buy the bonds of several very large Israeli companies who pay interest but have not filed for a, he a heater iska, a contract that circumvents the prohibition on interest by selling the, de the debt to a Jewish court of law. If you guys have ever heard of Jonathan Kahn's book, The Harbinger, that's exactly what that book's all about, that we don't, um, that there's something about, there's a, um, the seventh year is supposed to be a year of debt release. And it's, uh, man, I can't remember what it's called. It's called the, um, I want to say the Shemitah. I don't remember what it's called, but I want to say Shemitah is that, is that thing, I think, where it's like, um, there's like a, there's a biblical standard with money that God explains to you that is supposed to be the way that you handle money. And that's the way that, it, you know, how everybody gets along. But yeah, you know, mo like most of God's laws, we break them. So, uh, why? Well, because w when we're, you know, full of sin and we're in fear, you know, when you have money, the thing that comes with money is that you worry about if it's going to last you a certain amount of time. It brings a type of weird, like, fear to you that you need to have it and protect it and almost worship it. But that's the thing that drives people to be greedy not generous and not uh, pretty much what you're supposed to do with money. In God's eyes, that's use it for whatever you need. And then uh, sometimes when you run into poor people, that's like a good way to please God, you know. I mean, it doesn't sound like, I mean, whoever you rely on, whether you rely on money or God, like Jesus said, uh, uh, you know what I mean? A servant cannot have two masters. You cannot serve two things. You either serve money or you serve God. Another list includes companies traded on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange that are and aren't Sabbath observant. According to the Jewish law, it is forbidden for a Jew to benefit monetarily from the violations of the Sabbath. Exemptions. You know, the only time Jesus ever hit anybody, and I'm talking about like really hitting somebody, <laughs> like the only time in the Bible you ever see an account of Jesus getting angry and a acting out on it is when he saw the temple being used as a marketplace to sell cattle and 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 flocks and and also to exchange money like a bank and you know what how i see it is imagine if you walked into your house and that you know what i mean and say you're you know what i mean the temple's made because it's the it's the temple of the lord it's his it's his dwelling place it's where he lives 
Imagine when you come home and you're a king and all your servants are treating your house as if it were a, a, a type of, you know, like, it reminds me of Hawaii because Hawaii is a place where the natives are very proud. They love their country or their island. But the U.S. has gone over there and they made it like a tourist attraction. And that really, that doesn't settle well with the people over there. I have, I have Hawaiian friends that are really close to me that I train with. And um, that's, that's a problem over there for them that they don't like people coming over and that's kind of how i see it like you're in god's house and you're treating it like it's a like it's a like it's a place to uh go to you know what i mean like it's a shopping mall or something like something like a tourist attraction uh yeah i would probably put hands on somebody too i don't know exemptions are made for companies that while technically violators of the sabbath supply services that may be required to save lives those involved in saving a life are gener are generally exempt from sabbath ob observance are involved in security matters or have taken significant steps to prevent Sabbath violations in their business model. The Institute also publishes position papers on various issues discussing in depth the Jewish approach to issues like whether or not doctors are allowed to go on strike, minimum wage, the refugee status or foreign workers and uh, uh, Israel's obligation or lack thereof to provide them with work. The halakhic or the hala, halachic? Uh, implications of bankruptcy and whether or not observant Jews are commanded to prefer Israeli made products. That report was prepared at the request of the Neset, the organization said, among many others. And then there's the challenge of converting biblical monetary values into modern currency values. Important just not as Purim time. It says important not just at Purim time when the mitz mitzvah of a half shekel donation is commanded but for many other business transactions as well as marriage contracts where the value of a penny shave pruta uh, is the basic unit of value the half shekel deno uh, denotion as described in exodus 30 11 had a dual purpose in the bible as a means of taking a census and to provide donations for the sanctuary and later the holy temple in jerusalem Though the temple was destroyed, the custom of donating the half shekel, which still has the force of a biblical commandment for observant Jews, has persisted, and it is customarily given before Purim. The basic issue for the value of the half shekel, as well as the other monetary values described on, in the Torah, said Rabbi Ishan, is that biblical values were related to the weight of silver pieces that were used as money at the time, coined currency not having come into widespread use until hundreds of years af after Mosaic Law was instituted. Of course, as with so many other matters of Jewish law, there are numerous opinions about halachic authorities on the proper formula for determining these values, how much silver to include, among other issues. The Institute offers different values in modern money corresponding to these opinions, although it publishes an official value based on a compromise of the opinions. The exchange rate changes daily, said Ishan. We look at the representative rate of the shekel versus the dollar and at the cost of an ounce of silver on world markets. We have software that averages out the amount of a daily basis, and that's the amount we present in the modern Israeli shekel that we present for each value. The half shekel index is just one vehicle by which the Institute hopes to make Jewish law relevant to daily life in Israel, said Ishan. We established the Institute based on the belief that the Torah is alive, and that it can and must be implemented in daily economic activities. The halachic sources include a great deal of discussion on financial matters, that are relevant to daily life with answers to the many moral dilemmas that face society and on the use of economic policy to deal with social issues. Yeah, God intended for us to have a, have a monetary system. Money is good. That's how we get things that we need. The love uh, of money. <laughs> There's a fine line, people. Money is not the problem. It's the love of money. Don't love something that is inanimate and cannot save you. And that the, that does not listen to you when you need to be when you need a shoulder or when you know don't go to it for advice. The money does not speak. It does not hold and sustain things together in the universe like Jesus Christ only can. But yeah, there's a problem with that. I think that the uh, the current monetary system that we have here in the United States is based off of the debt. It's, it's, it's the, uh, the paperbacks, the greenbacks, if you will, the, the money, the, the, the U.S. dollar. It is, um, it is a debt note. That's what it originally was called. It used to be, um, it used to not be, you know, federal or whatever. It used to be free market. Like, you know, we used to have 
gold that backed up the money in the bank. You would give the, the, the bank your gold. Because people didn't really like hauling around big chunks of gold everywhere. And silver and rubies and whatever. So they made banks and they made debt notes and it was convenient. And it's funny how things always come in that package that it's convenient. Because usually when it comes to having convenience, you're giving up something. It's either privacy. So it's something that you have to trust the government with, ultimately. Uh, and if you're the more you give the government to to uh, to be trusted with, the more you have to watch them. And you know what I mean? Because that's how it is. That's how it's, that, that's how our government was set up to work. And our our government, uh, our founding fathers were very much influenced by mo the law of Moses and by the Ten Commandments and by the Bible and modern day liberals which are 20th century progressives that adopted that view are people who believe in uh relativity that you know truths that were that were relevant or that yeah relevant in the times that people were living in in those days uh you know what i mean that that doesn't necessarily apply to us today and that my friends is not true if jesus had a if he had a business card his business card his slogan on his business card would be the same yesterday, today, and forever. The truth never changes. It's always been the same. And you can apply it to any generation you want. The problem is, is our depravity. When we fail to look at ourselves for what we really are, and we try to hide in the darkness because we're, we know that if we walk into the light, we'll be exposed. We'll know that everything we're about will be put into view, and we will be put into shame. Our, tear, or our laughter will be turned into sorrow and tears, and we don't like that. We want to be happy all the time and whatever. That, there's nothing wrong with that, but you will have a more eternal and more uh, just unshakable joy if you come to know the Lord and know that He didn't do anything bad. It was kind of all of us. And we got to know how to be at peace with that. And it is well with my soul, just like that hymn goes. And you got to be cool. You got to be graceful. You got to be, you got to know that God gives mercy to whoever, whoever He feels like giving mercy to, man. And I know that. That might not sit well with you, man, but he's God and he created everything. So, you know, I like I like that because when you know he's in control, you know that if you're on his side, you know, you're in good hands, man. You're in his refuge. You're under his wing of protection. So, all right, you guys, hope you like my video. Subscribe and you'll see more videos like this. Peace.